Shame on you. I thought we were in this thing together. I'm just as scared as you are, but this has to be done. We don't want the bad guys to win. We gotta do this for, for, for justice, for freedom, for honesty. Yeah. All for one and one for all. This is the time. The time has come, everyone. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. This is one of the most legendary rivalries in the game. The San Francisco Giants are going to be taking on the Los Angeles Dodgers in the playoffs. And that's not it. 107 wins. 106 wins, now 107 if you want to count that wild card win. No series has ever had two teams with 105 or more wins. It's rare to have two teams with 100 plus. And the fact that it's the Giants Dodgers, it doesn't get any better. It doesn't. Like I had talked about in some live streams, if this was a novel or something or a, a movie script, a screenplay, I would throw it in the trash and be like, dude, this is so unrealistic. This would never, could never happen. But here we are. And uh, I'm going to talk about it a little bit in this video. But if you want even more thoughts or if you have any questions, you can put it down in the comment section. But also join me live for the pregame. The pregame ceremonies are going to be nuts. And uh, my goodness, it doesn't get any crazier than this right here. And I even said it just feels like this has to happen. It's why I picked the Dodgers to beat the Cardinals. This year, this had to happen. It had to. And here we have it. In game one, Walker Bueller is going to be taking on Logan Webb. Obviously, the Dodgers used Max Scherzer to win that wild card. And it was a smart move because they won that wild card. And he pitched uh, great. And so now you have Walker Bueller, 16-4, and 2.47 ERA, 212 strikeouts against Logan Webb, who has been just phenomenal. He had a great spring training. He got hurt, came off the IL around the second half against the Cardinals, and... Uh, my goodness, he's been unbelievable. Just better and better and better. 11-3 and record, 3.03 ERA, 158 strikeouts. And Logan Webb is pretty much our ace right now. There are Giants fans who don't like this move to have Webb starting this game because he is, you know, a relatively young kid. But, I mean, dude, he's our guy. He's our ace. We believe in Webb. He's going to pitch either way. He's going to pitch in game two or game He's going to pitch. What do you want to do, not pitch him? We're obviously going to pitch Webb, and why not show confidence in this guy and say, dude, you got game one. Go out there and get us the W. Besides, if you like Gosman or DiSclefani more, hey, we might need them because – we may have to face Max Scherzer in this series. We're going to face Urias. We're going to face other guys who are really good as well, you know, other than Bueller. And I just mentioned a whole bunch of really good starters. And obviously, look, these two teams, 106 wins, 107 wins. What else can you say? They got great pitching, great starting pitching, great bullpen arms. We'll talk about some of them. Some of them. Uh, great rosters, great, obviously, offensive players, guys who can swing the bat, superstars on both sides. This is epic right here, and nobody thought that the, the Giants would be this good, but they are this good. If you're still in denial over that, which I have Dodgers fans saying the dumbest things I've ever heard in my comment section, all due respect, I mean, the Dodgers fan base, a lot of very intelligent fans, a lot of really great people, but my goodness, I'm sure every fan base has its share of idiots, but this dude in my comment section talking about Giants had a soft schedule. A soft schedule. Maybe he actually ordered the schedules on eBay or something. And he like literally the schedule is a little softer, like the the way the schedule was made is a little softer than the Dodger schedule, which is nice, like a really hard, like you put it on the fridge, nice and hard. And the Giants was like this little sissy thing, because that's the only thing I could think of. Because if you're talking about the actual games, we played the same people y'all did, and it was just a crazy season. So many highlights, I you know, so many amazing games that you think is unforgettable. 
But you kind you kind of forget some because there were so many. There was the Mike Talkman robbing Albert Pujols of a walk off home run, unbelievable. There was the Darren Ruff check swing, which by the way he was already he already should have been walked in that at bat because there was a ball about a half foot off the off the strike zone off the uh, off the outside part of the plate that was called a strike. So you know we can argue all day over that, but ultimately yeah he did swing, he did go, but guess what? You can't just cry over a bad umpire because we all deal with that, and umpires stink. So sorry about that, but if you really want to get technical, he was he, he already should have been walked. But anyway, you had that. You had the Will Smith walk-off bomb. You had the crazy throw by Cody Bellinger and the great call by the Giants announcer, Dave Fleming. And, and Bellinger throws it so high. A little check swing bouncer. Muncy's going to field, and he didn't get Yastrzemski. So now Posey ranges away, and Bellinger throws it so high. Posey will come in to score. Yastrzemski over to third. That's how the Giants go ahead. You had the DeSclafani storyline, who was a guy who was just awesome all year, except when he played the Dodgers, and then all of a sudden he stunk it up until finally, I think his last start, he finally started to figure it out. So, yeah, just uh, so many great moments this year, so many storylines. And now Max Muncy is out, and this is, you know, look, I'm not happy. Uh, believe it or not, I am not happy that Max Muncy's hurt because – I'm not, I just don't get happy if someone's injured. It's actually a terrible thing. Now, if Max Muncy decided to retire, well, that'd be different, okay? If Max Muncy said, you know what, I have a wedding this weekend, I'm not going to make it, okay, I'd be very happy. But I don't get happy if someone getting hurt, I mean, like a physical injury, because it just this doesn't make me happy. You know, it's, I feel bad for the guy. But that being said, fact remains, Max Muncy's out of the lineup, and he's a Giants killer, so that definitely hurts the Dodgers. They're not happy about that, but on the flip side, our first baseman is also out, and that's Brandon Belt, and he's our captain. He's our captain, okay? He, and Brandon Belt was extremely hot when he went down, so in that case, it kind of balances out, but still, Max Muncy is out, and that hurts. So here's a potential lineup. You know, we're going to see Mookie Betts still. Corey Seager is hot. Trey Turner is hot. I mean, these guys are on fire. Justin Turner is awesome in a home run in the wild card game. Will Smith is absolutely awesome. I mean, this lineup doesn't slow down. Right, OJ Pollock, Matt Beatty at first base. Cody Bellinger will be patrolling center field for the most part. And, you know, Matt Beatty is a really good solid hitter. But if a situation comes up where, hey, we need a big hit right here, we need a big home run, they got a guy named Albert Pujols on the bench, and he's, you know, a future Hall of Famer. So, yeah, I mean, look, the Dodgers lineup is absolutely awesome, and I, I can't deny that. It's going to be tough to, to hold them down. They're going to score runs. They're going to score runs. I don't see the Giants going out and just dominating these Dodgers. I just don't see it. The Dodgers are, are very strong. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm going to pick the Dodgers to win the series. I'm just saying uh, it's not going to be easy. There's no doubt about that. But the Giants have a decent lineup of their own. And we should see Tommy LaStella at second base if we do not see Donnie Barrels, who just barrels everything up. They'll both probably spend some time playing second base. You know you know how the Giants do it. We like to, you know, platoon and change it up depending on the starter. Lamont Wade Jr. should be in right field. Buster Posey behind the dish. We have Brandon Crawford at short, who's had a career year. Darren Ruff at first base. Also, we have, you know, we'll, we'll get into the bench, but Flores could also spend some time there. And Wade Jr. can play a little first as well. You know, Giants are going to be very flexible. Chris Bryant in left. Mike Yastrzemski in center. Evan Longoria at third. And then, of course, the pitcher spot. So a couple of potential lineups for game one. And they'll be similar, you know, as we go on. But again, you know, they're going to, you know, there'll be some platoons and some changes. But if we look at some of the guys, you know, not mentioned in that lineup, Giants probably going to have Kurt Casale will be our backup. Barring injury, you know, our, our next choice would probably be Joey Bart, who's, you know, one of the biggest prospects in the game. So, you know, that would be pretty cool to see him, but I do not believe we will be seeing him. Uh, we'll be seeing him next year for, for sure. Alex Dickerson, a guy with some pop, good left-handed bat. And uh, let's see, Austin Slater. Austin Slater's had some huge moments this year, and uh, you never know. You know, this guy has extreme power as well. So I really like the Giants' flexibility and their bench, which runs pretty deep. 
As for the Dodgers, you know, their bench runs pretty deep, too. And, uh, you know, I'm aware of these guys. Gavin Lux, a big-time prospect, is a really good player. Austin Barnes, the backup catcher, a veteran guy. He's been around for a long time. He had experience in the 2015 playoffs. I mean, he's going, he goes back a long way uh, with the Dodgers. And then, obviously, I mentioned Pujols, Luke Rayleigh, a guy with some good power. Steven Souza Jr., Chris Taylor's going to get plenty of at-bats. He's another Giants killer, at least this year. Uh, he just killed us. I think he hit, like, three home runs in two games. Just destroyed us. So um, both these benches run pretty deep, and uh, we'll see. Uh, but all in all, this is going to be a fun one right here. Uh, no doubt about it. This thing is this going to be some serious entertainment and some serious torture, uh, probably for both fan bases. You know, we use that term, but obviously both fan bases are going to have some, some high-stress moments during this series. It's going to be completely crazy. Dodgers fans, you know, they, they're very proud of how powerful their team is, and you guys should be. It's a very powerful team. But let's not forget the Giants lead the National League, or they led the National League, with 241 bombs. Yes, we're missing Brandon Belt. That hurts. But the Giants, they don't. we don't have a Barry Bomb. We don't have a guy who hit 50, 40, or much less 73 home runs. The only reason the Giants could possibly break their franchise record, which is I still can't even process that because that – 2001 Giants team had not just Bonds, but it had Richard Aurelia who hit 37. How the hell did they do that this year? It's just because so many guys hit home runs on a very consistent basis. Nobody hit 40 or 50. Everybody was hitting 20 plus though, or close to 20. Like Ruff, like Slater, like Wade, like Yastrzemski, like Posey, like Crawford, like Belt. I mean, it's, everybody was hitting home runs. It's just insane. Of course, we got Chris Bryant. I, how can I not mention Chris Bryant? And he wasn't even with the team most of the year. So all in all, uh, an unbelievable you know season for the Giants. So you got to be aware of that power potential in this lineup dodgers are missing clayton kershaw take that what you will i mean kershaw is <laughs> it's clayton kershaw it's a, a little bit of a big name there so that doesn't help the giants have some injury issues but nothing major most of our main guys are going to be available i'm not sure the situation on johnny cueto but he probably won't be starting if, we, if you use him at all to be out of the pin but yeah i mean logan webb is healthy kevin gosman's ready uh d sclafani is ready wood I mean, that'd be something if we see him against his former team. So just a lot of storylines. That's a storyline in and of itself there. So just absolutely crazy. But last thing, we got to compare these bullpens. These games are going to go to the bullpen. Jake McGee, 2.72 ERA on the year. He had 31 saves. But unbelievably, he won't even be the main closer because... A young man called Camilo Doval has stepped it up. Number 75, 24 years old, has just been lights out. And he has three saves and three opportunities, 37 strikeouts in 27 innings. He is just untouchable when he's on, and he has been on lately. So Camilo Doval, that's going to be a big key out of that bullpen. And the Giants have had so many guys who have just been consistent all year. Jose Alvarez has been great at getting the Giants out of jams. Dominic Leon has been good. Kervin Castro has looked pretty good lately. And also, shout out to Tyler Rogers, who spent so much of his career in the minor leagues just trying to get a chance. He finally got one, and he's pitched very well for the Giants. He's not a guy I like in the ninth inning or maybe not even the eighth inning, but Tyler Rogers is a guy who keep you off balance. And if he's having a good day, he's a guy that we want in there as well. So the Giants' bullpen, I like it a lot. I think it runs a little deeper than the Dodgers' bullpen personally. I mean, yeah, they got Blake Trinan. He's awesome. Joe Kelly, of course. Corey Knable, of course, former Giants prospect Phil Bickford, who had a, a solid year, really nice, and it's really good to see that you know he made it in the big leagues. The former first-round pick for the Giants, we thought, I mean, I thought he was done and he was never going to make it, but 2.81 ERA on the season, 59 strikeouts and 51 innings. Unfortunately, it's for the Dodgers, but hey, I'm happy for him. But Kenley Jansen, of course, that's the big name, and his stats look good: 69 innings, 86 strikeouts. 38 saves, 2.22 ERA, but the Giants have owned Kenley Jansen this year. They have the highest batting average against him in the National League, 345 batting average against Kenley Jansen. In eight games, he has walked eight guys. Giants are 10 for 29 against Kenley Jansen with three doubles, a home run, an OPS over 1,000. So I do not know if that means anything or not. Maybe he'll be great in the playoffs. But it's something to note. All in all, you know, this series is going to be epic. This is epic. This is unbelievable. This is crazy. Uh, I can't believe this is happening. We may never, ever, ever see this again. I can live for another 
50 years and never see this type of matchup again. So enjoy it. It's going to be close. It's going to be tight. It's going to be hard fought. And we'll see. Um, I got the Giants taking it. No surprise. I have the Giants winning this in five games. I do not think they sweep. I don't even think it. they can do it in four. I really am uh, giving a lot of respect to this Dodgers team. I think the Giants have some magic going on this year, and they, you know they were able to win the West. They won more games. They every time, every time I've even doubted this team as a Giants fan, they've just done something amazing. Uh, this year feels like fate. It feels like 2010 on steroids. Like this is just next level insanity. So I'm taking the Giants. To win this series in five, let me know what you think down below. Give me your thoughts in that comment section. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up button. Look forward to a live pregame before game one tomorrow. Let's do it. When the Giants come to town, it's bye-bye, baby. Every time the chips are